Hi, I'm Ayman, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to drain and refill your Honda Accord 2007 automatic transmission fluid. The process for draining and refilling the automatic transmission fluid in a Honda Accord is, in this video, is for a 2003-2007 Honda Accord, but it should be the same for pretty much any Honda car. I mean, at least of the same generation. Now, before we get to starting uh, the process, First off, don't confuse the engine oil dipstick and the automatic transmission fluid dipstick. This is for the engine oil, and this is for the automatic transmission fluid. All right, so you can see that when I pull it out, it says ATF on it, which means automatic transmission fluid. And this is what the dipstick looks like. Now, uh, automatic transmission fluid should be around a, I think they describe it as a cherry red. So if it shows up as a very dark red or a brown or even a black, you definitely need to replace it. I mean, they always, they always say to uh, clean it before you check it, but we already cleaned it before. Also, when you put the dipstick back, just make sure that this notch right here, this cutout, is also facing this part sticking out right here. So you can see this facing the driver's side. It's really hard to see. Now let's see where we're going to deal with for draining. So that means we're going to go down below the car. That means you have to jack it up. And we have to look at the drain plug. So right here is the engine oil pan. But what we're dealing with here is the transmission. The drain plug is right here. It's this bolt right here that has a square hole in it. In order to drain the oil, all we have to do, uh, in order to drain the automatic transmission fluid, we have to take out this drain bolt. The process is very simple and you only need, at minimum, one tool, which is a 3H inch ratchet. And maybe if you're not able to open it, then you need a hammer to knock it or a longer ratchet or a longer wrench. So all you have to do is fix the ratchet wrench or the wrench onto the hole, onto the drain plug. All right, so now we're going to open it up and we're gonna loosen it. All right, so like I said before, if you can't open it by yourself, I probably can't open it right now because of the camera angle, but if you can't open it by yourself, then you need to use a hammer to knock it. All right. So now we have it loosened and now what we're going to do is I'm going to loosen it a few more and then I'm going to take an extension and then do it by hand. All right, so it looks like it's loose enough to do an extension. And the reason we have this extension is because as soon as we loosen the drain bolt, uh, automatic transmission fluid is going to come out. So actually, I should do it like this so you guys can see. Also, have your car warmed up before this because if it's warmed up, that means that more fluid should drain out. Because this long extension is rubbing against the engine oil pan, we're going to use a shorter one right here and then we're going to loosen it. So keep your uh, drain pan, I guess, under here so that it can catch the oil when it comes out or the fluid when it comes out. And let's see what this magic looks like. So as you can see, that's what the drain bolt looks like. And that's what all the draining fluid looks like too. And I think the amount that's going to drain out is around two and a half quarts. However, the entire system holds about 6.2 quarts and all the rest of it is going to be in the actual system. Like, uh, 
the torque converter, and some other parts. But right now, only 2.5 quarts is gonna come out. So now what we need to do with this drain bowl is we need to uh, clean it. So just take any cloth or rag and then clean it. Also, when this drain bowl comes out, it should come out with a washer attached. This washer is called the crush washer and we actually have a replacement. You can see right now, it's not on the bowl. And I think that's because we dropped it in the oil pan. It's lost in the oil somewhere, but that's all right because we have replacements. So these crush washers are called crush washers because as you put, because they're soft metal and as you put them in, the bolt is gonna crush them and it's gonna create a seal. Now, if you don't have a replacement crush washers, what you can do is you can turn around the washer and then put them back on. But in the past, or maybe we shouldn't say this, but in the past we have put them on without turning them around and it still worked fine. But just make sure that you clean the drain bolt. So here's what a new crush washer looks like on the uh, drain bolt, or as, so, as some people like to call it, a drain plug. And what happens is, like I said before, as you screw it in, it's, the soft metal is going to get crushed by the drain plug, and it creates a sort of seal. Now at the end here, there is a sort of a black piece. It's it's a, actually a magnetic piece that attracts all the contaminants in the automatic transmission fluid. So that's why you need to clean this part of the uh, the drain plug, so that makes sure that it can accept new contaminants. As you can see, it should be clean right now. So while this oil is draining, it should take around just 10 minutes. Let's talk about uh, refilling. So Honda recommends to use uh, ATF DW1. And we have an actual a box here, right here from Amazon. I think it's around $100. Although I think you can get them for cheaper by, by single packs. But the reason that we have so many because we're going to refill them now like i said earlier it's around it drains around 2.5 quarts but actually when my dad drained it last time he had to refill 2.5 quarts and then he came back the day after and then he he refilled another like quarter quart so it's always easier to ref, to refill less at first and then to come back later and refill more now we're going to refill the uh, fluid in order to do that we have to put the drain plug back in so now we're going to do here now I'm going to clean up the uh, drain plug pool. Just wipe it around. I mean, it looks like a little bit is still coming out. So we're just going to get enough. And then I'm going to screw it in by hand. All right, so after that happens, what we need to do is we need to take a torque wrench and then we need to torque it to 36 foot pounds. And as that happens, and as that happens, you're gonna see that the, uh, maybe you're not gonna see, but the crush, the crush washer is going to start to get crushed. So righty tidy, lefty loosey. So that means, all right. It's already ratcheted, already set to the right ratchet position. Wait. So that click right there indicates that is now torques the 36 foot pounds. So now we should be good to refill the fluid. Now we're going to refill the fluid. Now, like I said before, it's the right dipstick with the yellow cap usually, not the red one or the orange one. That's for the engine oil. So usually, or it would be preferable to lower the car, but for now we're just going to keep it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a funnel, make sure it's clean. We're going to take the dipstick out. Uh, I wanted to put this somewhere soon. So now you want to put the funnel into the filler tube. Wait, wait, wait. Just make sure it's nice and snug there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the ATF DW1 fluid and then we're going to refill it. So we have a quart bottle here. So that means we need three of these bottles. So one quart, two quarts, and then half of this.
so as, as I dump this, you're gonna notice that the color of the um, fluid, it's actually like, like it's accurate, it's cherry red. So this is what you wanna look out for. It smells nice too. Uh, so you probably wanna keep it out of the way of your cats or your pets. Bottle number two. So if there's a 6.2 quart system, that means we'll probably have to do this operation two more times, right? All right, so we're on our third quart, and my dad's recommending that, uh, what I actually said is wrong. We don't have to do this multiple times in one go because Honda actually might recommend that you do this process once every 50,000 miles after 100,000 miles. So that means essentially what you're doing is you're not replacing the entire 6.2 quarts of the system, making sure that's not halfway. Uh, you're actually diluting, you're actually diluting what's already in the system, uh, just 2.5 quarts at a time in every 50,000 miles. Now, if you have a actual transmission problem, then that might have to deal with, um, with draining and then refilling multiple times. But I think with normal maintenance, we're at one half, we don't have to worry about that. So the average Joe probably doesn't replace their transmission uh, like they, they should on a regular basis and most people will only replace their transmission fluid when they actually encounter a problem which is what happened to my brother Amiro. This car here we've had it for around four years it's at around 300,000 miles and this is the first time we've ever replaced the fluid on this car. So talking about the problem that my brother had well obviously his transmission had a problem so an example of this was when he was at a stop sign when he would stop, the car would still sh uh, stutter, stutter uh, a bit over. All right, so I got that wrong. What my brother's problem with his transmission was when he, he stopped at a stop sign and he tried to start going again, you know that when you go from a complete stop to a acceleration, your transmission deals with that change in speed. So because of that, uh, when he was trying to go, the car would start stuttering before it actually kick, kick off. So essentially, that was a problem with the transmission. And my dad suggested that if you have a problem just like that, where you realize that the transmission is being funky with the tr transmission of gears, then he suggests that you drive on only a uh, third gear. Because if you, drive, if you drive on any gear above that, then the car might start, ha start to have problems. All right, so let me take a step back and try to explain it in the best way that I can uh, from what my dad has taught me and also from what my eighth grade uh, middle school uh, engineering teacher has taught me because he dealt with a lot of the car me uh, mechanics and stuff. So let's go into the car. You should go on the uh, driver's side so that you can, okay. I'll go on the driver's side actually. Uh, I just realized I brought the dip dipstick in for this, but essentially what happens with your automatic transmission is that as your car is driving, it changes the gear for you as you're changing speeds. So. First off, when you go from a complete stop to accelerating, you want to start at first gear because first gear provides the most torque, but it is the slowest. So as soon as you get to like 10 miles per hour, the automatic transmission is going to ramp it up to second gear. And as you go up to around um, 20 miles per hour, it goes up to third gear. Then like 40 miles per hour goes up to fourth gear. Now what happens with the automatic tr transmission, at least for my brother or for me, maybe for you, is that Essentially, if you're driving at high speeds, like 40 miles per hour, you're at fourth gear. And if you stop, if your transmission has a problem, then it'll stay in fourth gear, which is not what you want because in order for you to accelerate from a complete stop, you need first gear because it has the most torque. But with fourth gear, you don't have enough power to keep the car moving. So that means it's gonna stutter a bit. That's why the transmission has a problem because it doesn't change gear transmissions. I hope that explanation was clear enough, but essentially, what my dad said as a possible solution to this, at least while you're trying to get to the garage to fix this transmission problem is, normally you'd be driving on D right here on the, the gearbox. D, D means automatic transmission, which changes your gear for you. But you want to instead use manual gear, which is one, two, or three. So my dad suggests using uh, gear three in order to get to wherever you need to go. But he warns that you can never go above 50 miles per hour, which means that you can never go on the highway because if you go high speeds, the RPM is going to be too much and it's probably going to damage the gearbox. So that means 
you want to drive at a slow speed probably on uh gear three uh and get to any garage or at least get home i guess the, actually i think that was a good explanation hopefully and if anyone has any corrections to me please explain down in the comments below for anyone who is curious uh to find out thank you all right so now all i have to do is take out the funnel put the disc in after that what we're going to do is we're going to start the engine and then we're going to run the gear a few times in order to get that um in order to get that uh liquid pumping through and diluting all the oil that's all the fluid that's already in the system so i don't know why that's a pro uh so it's so troubling for me but now we have the dipstick in and i'm gonna start the car and just change the gear while Wait. I'm trying to remember if we forgot anything. Okay, I don't think we did. Alright, so uh, I kind of want to demonstrate this, but we're going to... I'm probably not going to demonstrate it for sake of safety, but essentially all we need to do is turn on the engine and switch around the gearbox. But in order to turn on the engine and to play with the gearbox, we have to press the brake. Now, if I release the brake, it's going to end up causing... So the wheels are going to be spinning, but it's, kind of, it's going to cause the car to vibrate a bit. And since it's on jacks, that means that they could possibly, the car could possibly fall off. And the garage is right in front of me, so just got to weigh the options here. Alright, so my dad's telling me as long as I don't change the gear, I can just start the engine right now. And that should get it warmed up at least. Alright. Yeah, just keep doing this a bit while and it should be pumping through. Alright, so now we're done. That was a bit scary. And we should be done. Now, if you're not dealing with a Honda Accord, we're also going to be doing a video on, on how to change the uh, transmission fluid on, a, on my dad's Honda Civic back there he's replaced it once at 200,000 miles and another time at 230,000 miles but that was because the transmission had problems right now it's at 240,000 miles and since we have this much uh transmission fluid you might as well replace it anyway so we're going to be doing a video on that so go check out if you're interested and for now we're done all right so a bit of a correction here it seems like the 2.5 quarts uh was just a guide for the honda civic it turns out Taking a look at this oil pan, that we're gonna need a lot more um, uh, transmission fluid. And if we take a look at the dipstick, you see that nothing actually seems to be uh, coming out. So that means we're gonna add maybe half another half a quart, maybe even more if we need to. But hopefully, it should be okay. Now, also while I'm here. The day after you uh, refill the oil or the fluid, what you want to do is you want to put a want to put a sheet of something below there, probably paper, below your car, so that you can check if there's any leaks. Another thing you want to do is you probably want to refill more transmission fluid because, like I said before, after my dad refilled the uh, transmission fluid, he still came back the day after and he had to put another quarter quart. So. Those are two things you need to do with the day after, but after that, you should be fine. All right, so in the end, we add, we, end, we actually ended up adding about another, almost another quart of uh, transmission fluid from our original 2.5 uh, quart estimate. So that's probably around 3.75, no, 3.25 quarts uh, to be refilled after you drain it. So as you can see on the dipstick, actually, no, that's not a good idea. So another thing is that when you try to measure using the dipstick, what you probably have to do is you probably have to um, end up letting it sit for a while. Because 
you know, it's dripping, so that means it's going to take a while to collect onto the dipstick. So, as you take it out, you'll see that. Okay, three, two, one. Okay. So, oh, the reason I couldn't see it earlier is because it's a lighter color and I was expecting a darker color. I just realized. But essentially you should be looking for where that uh, level of that glossy red should lie instead of a brown because we you know we're filling it. And if it's in between these two dots, then you're golden. But as you can see, we're good. <laughs> the reason why I couldn't see it is because you have to look at one side because when you put the dipstick in, hey Aspa, hey Fikri. Uh, when you put the dipstick in, it's as you can see, it's rubbing against a bend, a bend, and it's touching only one side of the oil that, of the fluid that is dripping. So that means that the indicator is only going to show on one side. Just that's really bad. Just how high the amount, or just the amount of the uh, transmission fluid. But with that, I think we're going to close. But we're going to wait for the uh, noise to. Okay, as I say it, but anyway, I'm Ayman and today I showed you how to uh, drain and refill your automatic transmission fluid for your Honda Accord 2003-2007, but pretty much works for, should work for most Hondas around the same age. Uh, so, thanks for watching, please like and come subscribe, look at other videos on I and Ayman, especially on the Honda Accord, because uh, we've done a lot of videos on Amiral's car. We recently replaced one, uh, we recently replaced his alternator, so go check out that video. And like I said before, we're going to do a video on how to replace the, uh, or rather drain and refill the transmission fluid on my dad's Honda Civic. So I'll see you there. So I guess that's all for now. And I'm Mechanic Iman signing out. Peace.